Bum, 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 bum. Okay, I'm going to do an official unpacking of my bike. First of all, I have my riding kit that I wore every day. These darn tough wool socks, uh, which I switched up. I had two other pairs of socks, but most days I wore these. And my Superfly Giro shoes, which I definitely wore out and I wore a real groove here in the the sole, which man, the last few miles, these things were creaky. So the ride to Bozeman, I wore my old shoes. Um, these guys here, which are much more flexible, like regular shoes almost. So I could definitely feel it pedaling on these tiny little egg beater pedals. Okay. Uh, every day I wore this wool blend undershirt from Showers Pass was real nice, kept me cool, I, I would get it wet. And obviously I had my one love cycling jersey every day. Uh, I also had a long sleeve black jersey that I sent home and I still don't have it back yet. And my uh, SQ Labs bib shorts worked out very I nice. Is, uh, my helmet, I have this Lem ultra lightweight helmet which is super kick butt. And I put the light on there. It's a light motion light that comes with the tail light. And that's the, also the battery pack. Uh, really good, good combo. I also wore these Rock Brothers uh, sunglasses that uh, are photochromic. So they get clear in the dark and darken as it gets sunny. And then these Aeropex bone conductive headset, which I listen to music. I would do phone calls or FaceTime with my peeps and I also uh, books on tape but it also connects to my Garmin Varia radar tail light which I'll start at the top and go down here so this is where the phone lives and um, you know I could take it off just like so and put it in there I could charge it from the sine wave cycles USB which goes down, it's all internally wired through the steerer tube, down the fork leg, and uh, comes out to this charging hub right here, the Kasai, which I also have this Kasai Dynamo headlamp or light, and it also has a charging thing, and that thing unfortunately stopped working like three days into the race. And unfortunately, the company I bought it from, Perennial Bicycles, is not even responding to my emails. Lame. So, back to that. The phone could charge. I could take it off for photos. If it rained, I have this shower cap. Hopefully it's all still, yeah. I had this shower cap that I put on the whole thing like that and it would kind of get all puffy and it wasn't perfect, but it, it did the job. And it's pretty muddy and dirty and pretty much trash at this point. Um, I also had this sunglass cleaner holder that I could A, wipe this, wipe the lenses of the camera, wipe my glasses lens and I could also use it, I kept it right there I could also use it if it was really sunny and hot I could cover this because I didn't need the GPS on all the time I did roll with only my phone as all-in-one navigation communication photos um, and that's it really so, and it worked out great. Uh, some people don't like to trust their phones or whatever, but it worked out great. Anyhow, the tent lived up here. I had the poles on the bottom of the down tube at first, and then I switched them up to this setup, which it's a little bit more weight up high on the bars, but the poles are now part of that. So this is my entire tent, ground cloth, and poles for the tent. I would use the ground cloth occasionally without the tent with my sleeping kit if the ground was pretty rough and I was worried about my air sleeping pad, my inflatable sleeping pad. So there's that. <clears throat> the water bottle setup was perfect. Uh, after I got past Pinedale, I, I used to have the bear spray right there, but I switched up to another water bottle. So I had three water bottles plus the double wall, um, the double wall stainless bottle here, which I never really put any hot foods in it, but it worked great for putting ice and Coke or a beer or uh, whatever, keeping things cold, it was nice. Okay, starting off with these 
feed bags, ditty bags. This one often had, uh, um, like, say, a power or a Red Bull or something like that in there. Uh, in this little outside pocket here, I got some sun bum sunscreen. I also have a couple of, uh, which I don't really use sunscreen. I put some of this on my nose, like, maybe twice. I got a couple of um, lip stuff that my daughter made with that one, and I got that one, and I got some toothpicks in here. So that's what lives in this pocket of that ditty bag. Most of the time, this other pocket, which it has now, is just trash. I will put trash in there. Oops, that fell out. And then on this other side, I mostly have bars going up here in the main pocket. Bars and snacks and such. And then um, the two side pockets here. This one, I would always keep some sort of drink mixes, like I got emergency right now, and I got a little bit of lifesavers in here. You need to pop a little bit of sugar. Bam. That's what's in that pocket. This other external pocket here. Let's see if I check that down further. Um, I kept the shower cap for the iPhone and another shower cap like helmet cover, which I ended up just putting it right on my head and tucking my hair up inside so that hopefully my hair wouldn't weigh 10 pounds when it was wet or I wouldn't get it wet. And then I got some nitrile, uh, some rubber gloves that I thought it would be good for the rain. And it was okay, I used them one day. I thought I'd use them to repair my bikes. So I wouldn't get my hands greasy, but I never did. And uh, that's fine. I probably won't bring those again on another ride. I have other uh, rain mitts back here. Okay, so that's that for the feed bags. Garmin and Reach GPS worked great. Kept me on the track leaders dot watching game. My first headlight that I ever got uh, a few years back uh, it was cheap, Chinese, Amazon, but it's the most reliable thing I have. Again, this one stopped working. This one worked throughout and it's got a rechargeable battery. Up in the gas tank here, we'll just do it real quick, but that's kind of like my personal stash goodies. Smoky treats, edibles. I did keep some Visine with me, which I thought would make me feel more awake, but I'm not sure that actually worked. I keep Tums in here, because boy, after you eat a bunch, which you end up eating a bunch riding these big mile days, and then getting in the aero bars, it was like your tummy could just be like more and heartburn galore. So Tums were really nice to have along. I got gum in here. Really, that's about, oh, I got my, I got some old guy reader glasses, which I'd never used once because I didn't really use my maps all that much. And I do have my trowel to dig a poop hole in there. So that's what lives in the gas tank. And we'll just leave that there. Back here in this, uh, what do they call this one? The, ga or something. I forget what the bag is this called. But this has got all my like on the fly repair tools, bike kit. So chain lube and cleaner, a rag. I carried a regular Leatherman for a knife and pliers and whatnot. A CO2 uh, inflator device, a multi-tool. And then I brought like four of the main, like the three, four, five, and six millimeter Allen keys loose just to be, uh, for them to be easier to use. Put all that bag in there. And um, so that's that. Moving back here, this little bag is just an old seat bag that I repositioned in the gap between here. And it worked out great. And it's big enough to fit my super awesome uh, Shake Dry Gore-Tex cycling jacket, which 100% waterproof and uh, Nice and snug fitting so it's not flapping around. Like I saw a lot of people with their rain jackets or wind jackets that were super flappy. And that's just going to slow you down big time. So this was both, I didn't bring a vest or another wind jacket. This was my everything. If it got at all weather or cold, I could put this on and keep me warm. So that is an awesome, awesome jacket. It costs a lot of money too. I got these rain mitts. Super light and small, but I could fit them over my 
my wool liner gloves if I needed to, if it was super rainy and cold. Less about the rain and more about the cold. Uh, and you could still operate the levers just fine. So I got those in there, second one right there. I forget what company I got those from. Same one I got my rain pants. Okay, and back to this back bag, which comes off lickety split. You just pull a couple of pins right there, and boom, it's off. And then I had the solar panel rigged up like so. Make sure we're sure getting this, yeah. And take that off. And uh, I always had a battery in here charging, like so. This here battery. So that always just be in there, ready to go. And if I needed to switch them out, I have another battery exactly like it in the, the other kit in there. Uh, two quick snaps for this. And this is basically my camp. Like I didn't need to get into this during the day, except for rare random occasions. Sometimes to dry out my sleep kit, but other times just uh, maybe a piece of clothing that I didn't quite get in the right spot for the day. So this is mostly my camp clothes, because pretty much I wore the riding kit daily. These are some lightweight knickers that are somewhat wind and waterproof. And uh, these are my camp pants, but I also wore them if it was kind of cold. So these worked out real well. And they really don't take up any more room than a pair of shorts. I brought some wool, smart wool underpants, a wool t-shirt, a couple pairs of socks, some real thin uh, nylon or, or synthetic ones, some a little bit thicker, but it's also small wool. I brought this white long sleeve shirt here that, um, you know, in the end, I'm not sure that I would bring it again. It's bulky. It's not that heavy, but it's bulky and heavy enough that, and for how little I used it, the sun, I seem to be able to deal with the sun just fine. So I didn't really need to cover up from it. I, that's my feeling. I also brought this, um, this bag has down slippers and down mittens that I never opened or used once. So I probably would leave these behind even when I do this again. Uh, and this dry bag is my lightweight down sweater jacket type of thing, which also was perfect. Uh, you know, start off cold in the morning or for camp. Uh, if it was a cold night, I'd just wear this in my sleeping setup too. So that worked out great. <clears throat> I have another one of these uh, dry bags that I could stuff my whole sleeping kit in there if I needed to, or like if I knew it was going to be rainy all day and I was really not wanting to risk having it get wet in there, I'd stuff it in here first and then put that in there. And here is my sleeping roll, which I used you know, most nights, and most nights I did not set up the tent. But it's as simple as that. It's a nice big climate pad. It's a custom made, fairly low, uh, not too expensive um, uh, quilt, which is like a sleeping bag, it just doesn't have a bottom to it. So it's smaller and lighter. And then I got this insect slash dew uh, bivy baby sack, which would definitely get wet in the dew or in the rain. So some nights I set up the tent if I knew I needed real good rest or if I was in a campground or whatnot. But the sleeping setup on my, my pad, I was super, super comfortable. Okay, moving into the frame bag. And this is the big side here. So I would like clean my chain and oil it, like, depending on the conditions, but anywhere from two to five times a day. I do not like grinding going on, and you can see just how dirty the bike gets, right? Like, it's, uh, it's a dirty game out there. Okay, into here, I have this bag of, this is all electronic goodies, like the light that goes to the top of my helmet, the, another battery, all my charge cords, 
uh, battery powered headlamp for camp, um, the a wall plug for USBs. So all of that stuff lived in there. And I never did do it, but I figured if I absolutely needed more room in the frame bag for whatever reason, this could have mounted up here on the tent bag because it's got uh, the ability to put straps on there. Uh, and here is my, <laughs> my butt care kit. I had hemorrhoid cream, mostly because it has this maximum strength pain relief. I uh, didn't use it that much, and not for hemorrhoids so much as just the sores on my butt. Uh, this was put on every day. This is some bulk that uh, it's called Hoo-Ha Ride Glide. It's a uh, riding chamois butter like stuff made for women, but advertised as men love it too. So, and it's got tea tree oil in it. It feels real nice. Uh, I also brought, and this was put on mostly at night to go to bed, but some A&D diaper ointment, diaper rash ointment. So that would help with, again, the saddle sores that were a constant thing. And then this is some CBD lotion cream stuff that I got given to in um, Whitefish by Heidi, Heidi Gersio. And then when I got that THC salve, I just added it on top in Hopewell Lake. So, and that I used on my, on my leg when it was hurting and uh, it was really nice, really, really nice. I put some on my butt too, and I actually had my biggest mileage day that day, so probably should have been doing that more. That. Okay, uh, you know, anywhere there's extra space, food gets stuffed in there usually. So I got a thing of Fig Newtons here. I got uh, peanut butter. Uh, there could be bagels in here at any time, or leftover burgers or sandwiches. This nut bag I filled way too full in Salida, and I probably carried four or five pounds of nuts with me for way too long and I just ate nuts for a while I got some extra straps in here I got uh, I brought some of this layered insta fuel coffee coconut cream mix at the beginning uh, I didn't use it much but then I, I you know I ended up using it all but then this was uh, from my trip to Bozeman I grabbed a little bit more and you know a lot of times I would just take a spoonful of it and then wash it down with some water it's pretty good. I got up here, this is my little toiletry deal where I got tooth powder, a cut toothbrush, and that's not for weight so much as just easier to, to deal, less length. I got toilet paper in here and some pain relief, ibuprofen, Tylenol, stuff like that. Uh, let's go down here first. Rain knickers, which I had custom cut and made, and I added snaps to then connect directly to my knee high rain waterproof socks. And it was a perfect kit. The socks with those pants and with that Gore Tex jacket, I couldn't have asked for a better rain kit. It really performs perfectly. And it's not floppy and, you know, just slowing you down like crazy in the wind. I got a tube. So I didn't and then, dig deep enough into the frame bag under the rain gear because uh, there was a chain in there that I forgot about. Uh, I brought a second chain so that I could rotate them every five or 600 miles and keep them as fresh as possible and even clean them when necessary at different bike shops along the way. And then to go through these pockets here, I got a uh, mosquito insect repellent and a bar of soap, which I never used the soap, so that probably won't stay in there. In this next pocket, I hope this next pocket, I got a cleaning brush to clean my gears and chain and whatnot. <coughs> and down lower, I got, uh, I got, this is orange seal um, tubeless tire sealant that I just put in a chain lube bottle because I don't want to bring a syringe to be able to fill and I don't want to have to pop the tire. If I need to add any of this to the tire, I cut the hole on the top of the deal here so that it fits over a pressed a valve and I can squish some of this in through the valve into my tires without having to undo the bead or without having to pack a syringe. In here is a bunch of goodies for deep repair of things such as, we'll just dump it right out, and emergency bits. So 
It looks like I have uh, a set of brand new cleats, which I probably need to put on about now. My needles, including the curved needles that some of you saw me watch me sew up my sidewall. That's super crux to have some curved needles. If you ever want to try to repair a sidewall hole without pulling the tire off the, the deal. You can do it with a straight needle, you just have to pull the tire off the rim. These are patches for uh, clothing and, and whatnot, or the, the bivy sack, and uh, uh, yeah, any sort of lightweight nylon clothing patches. Thread to go with my needles. This is tire repair. I got plugs and patches and some tire boots in here. Um, bits of chain pieces and links. Couple sets of brake pads, which I only replaced the front once. Uh, extra battery for the shifters, which I'm glad I brought three of them with me, and uh, both of the shifter batteries from the factory stopped working. One, one of them on the way to the start, and then the other one not long after the start. And that's a bit of a pain, because I gotta take the, the hoods off of the shifters and get to these teeny tiny little screws to deal with. I had a package of these, but I took three out of the four and put them in my headlamp. So I got one extra battery with that. This is a little emergency fire starter kind of scraper thingy. Extra bolt and nuts and spacers. Uh, I brought a little piece of a tube because thanks to uh, Dirty Tooth Allen, um, this is a good fire starter. Especially if I put some of that A&D diaper ointment on here and then get that started with this. Uh, then you can get even like wet pieces of wood going and stuff. I got a patch for my sleeping pad and a lighter covered with Gorilla Tape. So, and luckily between all that stuff and a little bit of creativity, I was able to keep my bike going throughout the whole thing. Not without some, some technical difficulties, but all good really. So in the bottom here, I got zip ties. I've got an extra uh, CO2. I got about 75 feet of this Dyneema line. I got some super glue in there. I got an extra lace. It looks like a teeny piece of bungee cord. Okay. I got my pump for my tires. I got my spoon and fork action here. And in here I got uh, two water bladders that I can hook together via, let's see, via this Sawyer filter. So I fill the orange one, put the filter on, attach to the blue one, and then let gravity just, uh, let gravity filter and do its thing. I can make three liters of water at a time. I only used it twice. There's enough water at different places and you can get through usually. Um, would I bring it again? Probably. Uh, it's so nice to just have that emergency ability to make water when you need to. Um, but again, I only used it twice. And both times, the water was meh at best. That's not true, I used it three times. Anyhow, same story. And in the bottom here, I got a first aid kit. First aid kit, what else is there? Oh, some more Tums. Oh, and a, a, <coughs> excuse me, a little cap that I can put on one of these uh, bladders to use as like a shower, which I didn't. <laughs> Anyhow, I'll put that back in here. And we'll go to the other side. That's all on this side. We're almost done. I'll just flip the bike around here. No, no cuts on this one, this vid. Okay, on this side, it's more of a flat pocket, but uh, I would always keep my active duty riding kit in there, such as sleeves to go with your short sleep riding jersey, uh, knee warmers, which like legs to go with my shorts, which the first while I used them quite a bit, especially in the mornings and evenings. I got some wool thin liner gloves that also worked great, and I could also put them, put the uh, rain mitts over the top of those if it was really cold, which I did a few times. I keep a buff in here. I got uh, some uh, magnesium salt pills. 
Some of them you just suck on and taste pretty okay, and then some of them you swallow, and those, the swallowing ones have uh, 15 milligrams of caffeine in them too. So, and you're supposed to eat those like quite often through the day to keep, cramp, to keep from cramping. So that's that. I got uh, some wet wipe type of things, uh, combat wipes these are called, and then I found on the road a dude wipe. So I'd be curious if anyone watches this video who did the race and was like, oh, that was, that was my dude wipe. <laughs> Comment, please. That'll be funny. Uh, what else in here? Oh, I kept my maps. So I got six maps, which I didn't use all that much, but it was my backup to the phone. So it was good to have those. I got like extra Ziploc baggies. I brought this small piece of Tyvek, thinking that I would sit on it if I came to a spot that I just wanted to sit on a log or whatever, and I, I really don't like getting sap on my um, nice expensive riding bibs. So I used that once or twice, but then it really became mostly used the two times I had to uh, take these shifters apart to get to the batteries, because the screws are ultra tiny, and I couldn't lose them. And like uh, both times, it was the first thing in the morning in the dark that I had to deal with that. So I would bring this again. It's tiny and it doesn't take up any space or weight. Uh, a little bit more treats to put in my coffee. And that, my friends, is everything. That is everything that I brought on the Tour Divide. Bum, 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 bum.